anything, Pam? Hey, I'm trying to turn the camera off. No, you are crazy. I turned mine off because I'm going to uh, spin class after this, so I don't look pretty. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Can someone just say in the chat if you can hear and see me? Okay, hi, Loretta, hi, Michelle. So the reason I've asked everyone to keep your cameras off and to keep yourself muted is because this is being reported, or rec reported, it's being reported. It's being recorded for reuse. And it's okay if at the beginning people came on and had their cameras on and talked. I will just have that edited out. So no worries. Okay, so my name is Tamara Doris. If I do not know you, and I see I, several people on here um, who I know, I know we had like 38 people sign up, yay. Um, but maybe some people will be watching the replay and that is perfectly fine. So I thank you for being here today. Your higher self thanks you for being here today. And this next hour or so is gonna be all about delivering value. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not going to go into a big, here's who I am and what I know, any kind of spiel like that, except um, if you don't know me, I see names on here I don't know, please feel free to look me up on Amazon and then you'll kind of see what kind of books I write and what I like to teach and talk about, um, give you a better feel of who I am. Hopefully this class will too. Um, so I'm not going to talk a lot about my past, except to say something over the last year that I have realized that's made a pretty significant difference in my life. So many, many moons ago, 
many moons ago. For those of you who read Mind Over Matter, you know what kind of you know background and past I had. Um, not a good life, right? Really abusive childhood, blah, 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 blah. And when I was at the bottom of the barrel, like really, really down low, and I knew I was either going to, you know, go to prison or get killed. I mean, it was going to be one of those or, or die, right? Um, I found a little metaphysical book and I started reading it and we didn't have internet and Amazon back then. So I started practicing what I was learning. And I don't honestly even remember what book it was. It was just, you know, one of those books in the back of a, of a used church bookstore. And I started applying it to my life. And I started seeing some huge changes, like huge things that you couldn't just make up, right? Um, things that that should not should not really have happened, but they did. And I mean, I considered it a miracle. And so I decided once things started happening, man, and I went from a high school dropout to a college professor, of course, I had to get an education. Of course, that didn't happen like that. But I'm just telling you about what a stretch and, and how far I went compared to where I was. I got really, really excited. In fact, I started my graduate studies in psychotherapy because I really wanted to teach this stuff to other people. Um, and so I wrote my first, I think it was my first book. And it had a definite metaphysical feel to it. And I was at that time, I had, I, had just, um, I had just entered the corporate arena and people read the book and they were like, mm, really, Tamara, this is a little woo-woo. You know, you're, you're in graduate school. This is a little woo-woo. And I did what a lot of women do, right? When we're challenged, especially in our 20s, I cowered back. I was like, oh, shoot. You know, I don't have permission to shine this bright. I don't have permission to, to talk about these things, even though I know they're true. I don't have permission to talk about them. Sorry, I have to let people in. So I made this decision and I, I you know, I'm really lousy with time and that's not a negative affirmation. That just means that I really don't give a big shit about time. I'll be somewhere if I have to be somewhere, but I really try to keep, um, I try to keep, aware of the present moment. And that's really where I try to live most of the time. So when I'm talking about the past, I may get years wrong. I may say 10 years and I mean 20. So you'll have to just forgive that. But I will say around 15 years ago, uh, maybe, maybe 18, I don't know. Anyway, I decided I'm going to prove what I know to be true because I had kept continued teaching this and, and, and seeing clients and, you know, I was a hypnotherapist and I started, I started seeing that this woo woo stuff really truly worked, but I had to know if there was a science behind it. I had to believe that there was a science behind it. And so I started studying. I studied neuroscience. I studied quantum physics. I studied epigenetics. I studied biology. I studied psychology. And most of you who do know me and know my more recent books of the last 10 years or so realize that I have this science-based background. Well, here's what I learned when I was alluding to the last year. I learned that science has proven everything that metaphysics and spirituality has been teaching, everything up until this point. But now science has stopped. Like, I'm not saying it won't go any further. I have no idea how much further it will go, and I will continue to study it. But the point being that science can only prove so much, and now it's right here. But metaphysics and spirituality goes on and on. So here we have this gap. So I've decided that I cannot confine myself to science anymore because there is so much outside of science that needs to be explored, and I'm not getting any younger. I don't know if you are, but I'm not, I like to think I'm getting younger, but I'm not really chronologically getting any younger. So I don't want to wait for science to tell me how to be a better manifester because I already know and I do it and I teach other people how to do it and I write books about it. But this last year has really taught me that you can't just rely on science alone. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm going to give you some, some absolutely effective methods that you can use. And I want to explain it as I see it, you know, and, and hopefully it resonates with you. If not, you know, oh, well, you can, you can not listen to the call. That's fine. But I truly, truly want to share this information with the world because it's so 
important and effective, especially right now when we're living in a time when so many people are, are just miserable, right? They're just miserable and there, there's so much division. That doesn't have to be your reality. It doesn't have to be your reality, okay? So the first rule of manifestation is that we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. And I'm sure maybe you've heard that if this is not all new to you. But what does that mean? We attract what we are. We are consciousness. We are accumulation of our, of our thoughts, our emotions, and our subconsciousness. So that's consciousness, right? That's what we are. Now, we could say that we're just our thoughts, but I want you to go with me here. A thought, you don't think in texts, right? You don't think in letters. You think in images. You think in memories. When you worry about the future, you're envisioning what could happen. When you're feeling bad about the past, you're picturing what happened in the past. Your subconscious mind is a huge part of who you are. And so your thoughts really is your imagination. Just bear with me on that. Your thoughts really are your imagination. Okay, now I'm going to use an analogy that has been really, really um, effective for me to use in my life. And I hope it is for you too. And it's that, if you can remember, of a fax machine. Now, many years ago when I was working for a shoe company, it was a shoe chain and we would place orders. You know, it was a high-end, high-end shoe store. Um, we would place orders for all of our stores. We had like 26 stores, um, you know, in Italy and places like that, because that's where the, the high-end shoes came from. So then one day the owner of the company brought in a fax machine, right? We didn't have computers. We had typewriters, a fax machine. What does this thing do? Well, you put an order on a piece of paper and you feed it into the fax machine. And then that piece of paper miraculously comes out in Italy, in Milan, it comes out somewhere. How did that happen, right? We, we're all iPhone now. We totally have forgotten the, the miraculousness of technology, which if you know me, you know I have right now, I'm putting energy into this call with different devices. So, so I definitely am a big fan of technology, but back then it was like mic drop. How did that, how is that happening? I don't know how that happens, but it's a great analogy for us. Let me tell you why. If you imagine that your thoughts, remember that's your imagination, your images, and your emotions, three things, going into that fax machine, and the fax machine is your subconscious mind, and what comes out, it's not an order for shoes, it's your life. So the life that you're living right now, and I don't care who you are, the life you're living right now has been filtered through your subconscious mind and it's been fed through with your thoughts and your emotions. And remember thoughts are, when I say thoughts, I mean your imagination, same thing, okay? So if everything in the universe is, if I'm creating my own reality through my thoughts and emotions, why do I keep getting the same thing over and over again? What is this pattern? Why do I keep having the same experience? Well, it's, it's like a conveyor belt. Think about a conveyor belt. You look at what's around you and you don't like it, so you react to it. And your reaction alone is recreating it. So it's like taking that, that, same, that same piece of paper with the same order on it and putting it in the fax machine, getting it out and saying, I don't want this, putting it back in. No, I don't want this. That's what we do. And, and I understand that we're not all destitute. Oh my God, I hate my life. I get that. I work with women who are successful. Um, I work with women who are confident and beautiful, but we tend to have patterns in our lives. And if they're working with me, chances are they want more, right? And so I'm right there with you. I get it, I get it. But there are things that we want different. And the only way we're gonna get those things to change, the way we want them to change, is if we start feeding the fax machine a different order form, okay? So, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that. This is not, like I said, this is not a teaser call. This is not, you know, and then sign up for my program and I'll tell you the truth. That's not what this is. So I hope you hang in here and, and, and really go with me 
if you're not already, um, you know, in, in my inner circle, because this can be really valuable to you. Okay, so remember I said that what we're feeding the facts is, is our order. So studying many, many religions and spirituality things from all over, plus all my, my vast knowledge of science, I have concluded, and this includes religions worldwide, that there's really two aspects that we have to focus on. Okay, there's only two. One is our closed-eyed aspect, and one is our open-eyed aspect. So the fun part of manifesting, which we'll get to this morning, which is how you know all the law of attraction teachers and manifestation coaches will teach that, and because it's the fun stuff. So who doesn't want to know the fun stuff? But you know what? It's not the fun stuff that messes us up. It's the not-so-fun stuff that nobody wants to talk about. That's where we get held back, okay? So open-eyed and closed-eyed. I'm going to put the closed-eyed right over here for a few minutes. And we're going to talk about the open-eyed. The open-eyed is our waking hours. The open-eyed is, is what when we're, when we're awake, when we're out in the world, when we're at home with the cat, whatever we're doing, it's our open-eyed hours. I just call it our waking hour. Um, excuse me. So the, the three things that go under the open-eyed are embodiment, catch, and release. Okay, so let's get into this and understand what they are. Now, I, I forgot to say at the beginning, I'm not going to take questions throughout because I'm leaving you all on mute and with your cameras blacked out so I can uh, reuse this for something else. But please feel free at any time to ask a question in the chat. And when I'm done with my, with my talk, before we go into our meta creation session, I will answer any questions. Okay, so please feel free at any time to put it in the chat. I'm not going to look now because I, I have these two big screens. I'm not even used to that. So I'm, you know, I'm getting tech savvy, but not, not quite there all the way. Okay, so what is embodiment? Well, let's, let's experiment with it. Let's try it out. So I'm going to ask you right now, let's pretend I have a magic wand and I'm waving it over you. And I say, tell me one thing that you want to manifest, one thing. And this can't be like, I want to be on a date with Brad Pitt, right? This needs to be something that, that is in your heart that you've always wanted. And maybe it is Brad Pitt. I don't know. But I want you to pick something that's really meaningful to you, something that, that if, you, if you were going to intend and have it come true, that would be your one thing. And try not to make it just about money. Little sidebar on that. Um, and I have learned this the hard way. If we have any money issues in our tissues, right? Any, any blockages of scarcity, and we try to manifest money without dealing with the issues in our tissues, it brings them up and it stops the flow of good. So instead of focusing on money, I would ask that you think of what you would do with that money. Maybe it's you know, a worldwide vacation or going around the world in a, in a cruise ship, or maybe it's, you know, expanding your business, whatever it is. But think of that one intention and, and try to make it not just about money, okay? Unless you want, it's up to you. Okay, now close your eyes. I can't see you, so I'm just trusting you're closing your eyes. And I want you to imagine it's after the point that you just got that. It just happened. And I want you just to feel how yummy that feels inside. Just feel it for a minute. Okay. Okay. Now you can open your eyes. The way that you just felt is called embodiment. And what embodiment is, is we are assuming the wish fulfilled. We're feeling as if we have it. Neville Goddard always talked about feeling the wish fulfilled, assuming the wish fulfilled. And when you do that, things go on. This isn't, this isn't um, just woo-woo metaphysical. This is things go on in your biology. Things go on in, in your um, neural pathways. Things go on in your physiology, right? So when you are embodying the intention that you want to manifest, you're helping to invite it into your life. You're starting to absolutely change the order on the facts. OK, so we can do that and we can go, oh, this is beautiful. So Tamara says, all I have to do is walk around and I'm going to have whatever I want. 
because I'm walking around embodying the intention of having this, you know, beautiful, I don't know, show gallery show or best selling book or whatever our intention is. Sure. But there's more to it than that. And this is where the catch and the release come in. So, so we walk out of our house and we're like, I'm embodying this, this version of me, because let's make no mistake about it. In order to have the thing that you want, you have to become the person that has it. And that's really what this class is about. That's why I called it Elevate Her, because we have to elevate ourselves to become that version of us. And we also have to elevate our emotions and we have to elevate our frequency, right? So it's all about elevation. So we're walking around and we're embodying this manifestation that we're already assuming it's true. Our body believes it's true. Our subconscious mind is starting to believe it. What happens? Life. We walk outside. We get on the freeway. Someone cuts us off. We open the mail. We have a past due bill. We pick up the phone and one of our adult children says, I need money, mom. Right? One of those things happen and immediately it takes you out of embodiment and out of alignment immediately so we have the solution of what i call the catch and release the catch is where you recognize there's a different feeling in your body like this isn't kansas anymore i'm not embodying my intention you notice it and and really it's not that hard to notice because cortisol usually maybe adrenaline will usually be cascading in your system like <gasps> that feeling. So catching is recognizing the physiological part of when you're out of alignment. And I got to tell you, you can't hide from it. A lot of us, a lot of times will stuff it down, right? Like I'm really upset at that person. Let's go get donuts. Or I've had a bad day. Pour me a whiskey. I like wine, but my husband likes whiskey. Ugh. That's burying it, right? That's suppressing it. That's not catching it. That's letting it live in you. So catching it is the process of getting it out of your system as quickly as possible. If you've been in my coaching program, you know, I'll tell you EFT. You know, some people are huge fans of EFT, others not so much. I use it in my practice for what it was intended and designed to do. And that is to take you out of stress. That is what Gary Craig, who I learned from, designed it and invented it from, who came from Roger Callahan. And that's exactly what it was for. It was originally called thought field therapy. So it works beautifully. You're upset, you're mad, you're angry, you're out of alignment, do some EFT. I'm not gonna go through that here. You can go on YouTube and find about 75 million EFT teachers and channels. Real easy to learn. Anyone can do it. Dance. Go outside in nature. Get barefoot in the grass. You can do anything that you want to do to get that cortisol out of your system. I just want you to remember the catchphrase is calming down the physical reaction to whatever you're upset about. What if it's just depression? What if you're just like, oh, I'm trying to be an embodiment, like Tamara said, but then I go out and I just see all this evidence out there that I'm not having this manifestation come true. Catch that. Because that is when you have to realize I'm feeding the same stuff into the fax machine because I'm responding to it out here. I'm responding to it and I'm, I'm just repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. So catching is about stopping. Stopping getting, getting the system out of your body. Now, the release part is a little more interesting. So, and I want to, I want to give you, I want to give you a, a, an image in your mind. And I've always taught my kids this, and, and it's been pretty effective. You've got high vibes and you've got low vibes. Your low vibes are things like hate, um, gossip, sadness, anger, helplessness, right? Those are low vibe feelings. Your high vibe feelings are joy and gratitude and play and fun and laughter. Okay, so let's say your dream is right here. Big, beautiful dream, whatever your intention is. It's just this beautiful intention. 
And I tell you, here's a bucket. And this bucket has gold coins in it. And every time throughout the day that you feel a high vibe thought, you're putting gold coins in that bucket. And when that bucket gets full, you get that dream. But every time you feel a negative emotion, a low vibe emotion, you're taking coins out. It's a very simple analogy, but it works to such an extent that my youngest daughter will say, oh, I was just taking coins out of the bucket, right? You know, because I've ingrained that. And, and it's a really good one for all of us to remember. It could be the simplest thing, like a, like a snide remark, like, do you see what she's wearing? Mm, there goes some coins, right? But if we notice everything and how beautiful it is, there goes the coins. It's like a, a, a jackpot, right? So trying to remember that when we have the high vibes, we're not just doing it to be nice people. Sure, we're raising the energy and the frequency of the planet. And I think that's kind of a good thing. People that are around us are picking up on our energy and that's kind of a good thing. But moreover, when it comes to manifestation, we're working toward it. We're saving our bucket up toward it, okay? So when it comes to the release part, now we've caught it. We've caught it in our physical body and now the release. The release isn't from the physical aspect. The release is the emotional and the energetic aspect. So what do I mean? Well, again, what most of us do when we have something happen, we're reacting to something, is we try to cover it up. And I tell you, when we were kids, especially little girls, um, we were just taught to hide stuff. And stuff, sometimes bad stuff happened and it was just like, you know, you couldn't deal with it or it was just either too bad or, or, or too, too traumatic or just too frustrating. And so we compartmentalized, right? And women are notorious for, you know, feeding it or eating it or spending it, right? And I'm, I'm not at all being sarcastic with this because I am right there too. I have gone through all of these things myself. When we're at the release phase, what we have to do, ladies, is we have to understand that nothing that happens to us in our external world has any meaning beyond the meaning that we give it. Has no meaning. Oh, well, that happened. That was terrible, was it? No, you're thinking it was terrible, made it terrible. And this goes for everything. You know, I'm not here to debate world tragedies. I'm just saying that we spend so much time worrying about things and regretting things that we've given meaning to. So when you're doing the release phase, what I want you to remember, especially when it comes to other people who trigger you, is each time you're triggered by another person, it's not that event that upset you and it's not that person. It's that that person caused a feeling in you that's been buried in you that you have never wanted to deal with. Maybe that person reminded you of the person who, who did the infraction, doesn't matter. The point is during the release process, we simply stop and say, what did this remind me of? What does it mean? Does it really mean this? And can I let it go? Can I just let it go? Can I release the emotional and the energetic? You know, one of the things, if I have it here for you, um, this call, it, besides my own energy and the Reiki that I'm going to do and the frequencies that we're going to do with our little short session coming up here, is I have my radionics and I have my energy healing devices, and they're all aimed in this container that we're in right now together. And this applies as far as the, the replay, too, that you'd be more than welcome to, to watch again if you like. Um, but energy, energy technology, it works. Subtle energy fields can now be detected and photographed and measured. Okay, so these things that happen to us that upset us, that we've buried alive, are still within us. And every time something happens that chaps your hide or pisses you off, it's the universe saying, hey, hey, honey, there's something to work on. Why don't we release that? Why don't we let that one go? And honestly, besides all my technology toys and you know EFT and all the fun stuff that we can do, I honestly have found that journaling questions and answers can be the very best way to do this. You know, ask yourself, what did this mean? 
What was I really upset about? What's the worst that could happen? You know, like take a uh, take a tax bill. You go back and forth. What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst? And then what? And then what? And then what? And really, the worst is not the worst, right? You're not going to be homeless. Oops. Okay, so the open-eyed part, which we just covered, just to refresh your memory, is embodiment, catching those negative emotions when they hit you, getting them out of your body, that's catch, and then releasing them. You know, and a lot of times, I will be the first to say, a lot of times coaching, in my opinion, is all about the catch and release. You know, yeah, I remind my clients, let's embody this. And I teach them my techniques and I teach them the science and, you know, and we have the accountability and the group support and all that, but that's not the point. The point is if we all just knew what I said at the very beginning, let's embody this, this vision and carry it around with us all day. If we could all do that, we would have so many more manifestations than we do. The good stuff, not the stuff that we already put in the fax machine and recycled and recycled. I mean, it's the good stuff, right? Okay, so let's move on to the closed eyed. Let's look at the closed eyed stuff. So I call this, you know, meta creation. And if you haven't heard that term from me before, meta creation is simply a combination of meditation and visualization and hypnosis, right? It all works together. So I'm going to explain what it is. Um, and then I'm going to see. If anyone has any questions in the chat, please put it because I will be answering those before we get into the experimental part. Uh, but I do want to talk just a little bit more about um, meta creation. Let me see, make sure. I can't see anything in the chat right now, but I'll look again in a moment. Okay, so the closed eyed part, meta creation. The first rule of thumb, and I think this is where a lot of people who read my books or have you know gone to other pre classes I've done. It takes a while, you know, even in my coaching programs, it takes people a while to, to really grasp this. So I'm just going to say it in no uncertain terms. You've got to have reduced brain waves. The main difference in closed eyed and open eyed isn't just your eyes being closed. It's your brain waves being at a, at a lower state. Like if you look at the, I don't know, aboriginalese or whatever, however you say that, um, or Native Americans, or any any kind of ritual type thing, they have the open eyed and the closed eyed, right? They do. And the closed eyed is always an altered state. Now, I tell you this, I have studied um, in the last year, I've taken some advanced um, remote viewing classes. In fact, with people who were associated with uh, the CIA when they were doing the Stargate program, um, you know, with the CIA. So, so I've learned from some of these people. And it's so interesting that you wouldn't think that remote viewing, which is, you know, closing your eyes and seeing something that's not right here, psychic work, channeling, and manifestation, you wouldn't think that they all require this. But again, with the, the Native American rituals, you know, maybe they smoke some peyote, peyote, but the point is, not when they go in the sweat lodges, they're getting into a trance. And I don't think I've made that as clear as I should have or could have or am now. When you're doing the closed eyed part, you are not just sitting here going, okay, open eyed, closed eyed. It's not that simple, but it's that powerful. So the first rule of thumb with meta creation is you have got to reach the trance state. Now, I suggest that people, I suggest that people do it 20 minutes. And the reason I say 20 minutes is because it's going to take you that long, unless you're just really good at it, but it's going to take you that long to get into a trans state. So that's why I'm a big fan and I use um, binaural beats. Um, I use uh, frequency generators, which when you have the little session we're going to do here, I ask if you do have earbuds or headphones that you put them on. Um, because you'll get more out of it. And if not, then when you listen to the replay, please do. Because it helps reduce your brain waves, which then relaxes your body, right? And then when your brain waves are reduced to the alpha and eventually the theta brainwave state, 
you've got the portal to your subconscious mind, the gateway open. So that's the part of the facts where you're feeding it the orders. Being awake and imagining what you want and being in a high vibe mood is fantastic. That's embodiment. But this is the practice that catapults it. This is where you get the trajectory. This is where you're like in the quantum field. But you have to get to that stage. You have to get to that trans-like, pre-hypnotic relaxation. And that's why I tell people 20 minutes. So you get yourself in that relaxed brain level, that reduced brain wave. And, and honestly, you know, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Jose Silva. Jose Silva is one of the first uh, mind control things that I was certified with, gosh, probably 20 years ago. Um, and he only taught at the alpha level. And I know some fantastic healers who work only at the alpha level. They don't even worry about the theta level. I personally believe that when we can get to the theta level, that's when we are, you know, we're doing other timeline stuff. We're doing crazy, crazy effective stuff. That's what I believe in my experience. But the theta is just one level down from where you're at right now. Unless I'm boring you to theta. But normally when you're reading and you're talking and whatever, you're at a beta. And so there is power in being at a beta. And embodying. There is power in that. Of course, there's energy. There's energy in everything we think, say, and do. But what we're talking about now for the close eye practice is really getting yourself into that trans-like stage, that state of mind where your body is super relaxed. Your brain is alert, but it's relaxed. And you know, if you ever take a nap, like on a Sunday afternoon, you know, you just sit on the couch and you're reading for a few minutes and you're like, oh, I'm just going to close my eyes. And it's that stage after about five minutes where you're just, you're almost floating. I know that's a big ask, but I'm telling you that it is the secret sauce. It is the hard stuff that people don't want to do. We don't want to, we don't want to look at the, the demons in our closet, you know, the, the stuff in our energy field that's got us blocked. And we don't want to give our ego mind away and let our subconscious mind take over. Those are two things people just don't want to do. I have been studying this stuff almost three decades. And those are the two things people don't want to do. And so that's why I'm here saying, you got to do these things. It's going to help. It's going to fix it. I promise. Okay. All right. So we get our stage, our, our excuse me, our brain to that relaxed, relaxed state. This is when you're going to pick up your ideal outcome. I just had you pick something in your mind that you want to manifest, whatever, whatever that is that you want to manifest. Now you're going to think of it, but I'm going to teach you some new things that is not just general visualization. This is different. The first thing is I want you to think of that thing happening after the fact. So let's say, for example, you have a big lawsuit. Instead of just seeing the judge hit the gavel and say in favor of the plaintiff or whatever. No, 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 no. We want to make sure this is a done deal on the quantum level. We want to make sure it's a done deal. So instead of seeing in the courtroom, I want you to see yourself after the trial or whatever. I want you to see yourself sitting at a restaurant, having a champagne cheer with your husband because you just won. Okay. That's the way we want to do it. We want to look at it as we're looking back on it after the fact. Okay, this is recently new for me. This is recently new in, in my studies and, and what I've been applying, and it's very, very effective. So it's already happened. Now you are adding your senses. Um, sound is a big one. You know, here's someone congratulating you. Here's someone go, wow, that's so great. Here, if there's, if you're outside and you feel the wind on your face or your feet in the sand or whatever it is, Use as many of your senses as possible. Okay, now I'm going to really throw, throw a, a wrench in it for you. I want you to try, instead of seeing yourself on a screen, I want you to see yourself in a screen. Now, in many of my books, I've talked about, you know, visualizing yourself. And I have always alluded to the fact about seeing yourself in the image. And I know that that throws people. So I want to just explain it like this. Okay. If I tell you to imagine yourself climbing a ladder, chances are you're going to be looking in your mind's eye 
at a screen where you're climbing a ladder. And there you go, look at you. But when I say put yourself in the scene, you're not gonna see your body. You're gonna see the rungs in front of you, right? If you look down, you'll see this, right? You're not gonna see your body from the back or from the side. That is the difference. And it's a subtle difference, but I'm telling you it's a powerful one. Now there's nothing wrong throughout the day. I do it myself of seeing yourself on the screen, seeing yourself on the stage, seeing yourself, you know, with whatever it is that you want. Nothing wrong with that. But when you do your meta creation, I wanna really encourage you to begin to see yourself in the scene. So if it was a scene where I was celebrating, I just want a lawsuit. I might, I would just see my hand. My eyes are closed and I might be cheering and going, thank you so much. And hearing someone say it back to me, okay? Takes time. This is why we practice. This is why I tell you 20 minutes, right? This is why you wanna get your brainwave to that level. But I'm telling you, it works. It works like a miracle. We're not done though. The next thing, if you're in that scene, which you now are in, and this thing has happened, which it already has, how are you gonna feel? You're gonna feel so excited. You are going to feel grateful. You're gonna feel joyful. You're gonna feel excited, right? Because you created this. And it's really important, especially if you don't know me, it's really important that I express that these things I talk about are very, very science-based. But again, like I said at the very beginning of the call, spirituality takes us and, and metaphysics takes us to a whole new level. And we're crossing that barrier now because science doesn't know. Science is like, well, if that happens and you create this, then you must be entering another timeline. Okay, I can buy that. Or science says it's parallel universes. Okay. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me what it is. What I want to know is that thing that I want to create in my life. Am I going to get to create it? And the answer is yes. Right? That's what matters. So when you meta create, you are, you are rewiring neurons. You're rearranging atoms. You are collapsing quantum waves. Um, you're making all of these differences. And importantly, really importantly, is you are overriding the limiting beliefs that are telling you you can't have whatever it is that you think you can't have that you don't recognize consciously. So remember, our conscious brain is about 5% of our thinking. Our subconscious unconscious is about 95 to 98%. So consciously, you're like, okay, Tamara, I want six clients a month. I want to make this much money. I want to exchange abundance for value. I love what I do. This is how I want to build my business. And this applies to anything. I just am talking about who I normally work with, but you could apply it to losing weight, getting healthy, finding a soulmate, whatever you want. So this is what I want, Tamara. I want this. And I'm going to embody it. And I'm going to walk around and I'm going to, I'm going to feel it. If there's this message in your subconscious mind, which is you know 95 to 98% of your thinking, and it's saying, oh, sorry, you can't have that. Oh, you're not good enough. Who made you think you could have that? If that's in there, how do you know? I tell you how you know, you look around and if you don't have the thing you want, there's something in there. And how do we find it? We notice what our trigger points are in our day-to-day open-eyed life. We catch them, we EFT them out. Then we sit and we think about what did that trigger? Am I willing to let that go? Am I okay? You know, maybe do mirror work. Journaling, again, is one of the best things. And then we go into our meta creation. You see how it's a package deal? Because we, we battled the, the conscious open-eyed part. And now we go into the quantum field. And what we're doing in there is we're changing that thought. How are we changing that thought that you don't deserve it, that you're not good enough? By virtue of having it. 
Because when you're in that metacreative state, relaxed brain waves, subconscious mind wide open, you're changing the thoughts that say you're not good enough because now your brain is going, oh, we must be good enough because look, we have it, right? The subconscious brain does not know the difference in what's real or imagined. And when you add emotion to that and imagery, it's going to be like, it's a done deal. You know, I just wrote an ebook that I, I think I'll be giving away. I'm not sure yet. It's being edited right now. Um, but I use the example of, I think it's Michael Phelps. You go to the Arden, Arden Hill Spa here in Carmichael, and they've got pictures of him all over the place because he's a he's an Olympic swimmer and he swam at the pool there. And I read a study on him one time and it talked about what I'm talking about here, that he would not just see himself watching himself swim, like from this perspective, he would see himself in his mind, he would feel himself, like all he would see in his mind's eye would be his arms, right? Because he's swimming. He would make his body, he would, um, he would allow his body to feel, you know, the weight of the water. And that's how he attributed that to how he became an Olympic, Olympic gold medal, whatever. I don't really follow sports, but obviously he did something right. So I just want you to understand that once the mind, the subconscious mind thinks that it's already done something, which is why we go after the fact, right? We go after the fact because it's already happened, it's a done deal. The subconscious mind has no choice but to believe you. The subconscious mind isn't like, oh no, you're not good enough. You've showed it a picture and you've given it emotion. It's like, oh, this is happening, okay. Right, it believes you. So when you tag team it like that, when you do the open eyed practice, catch your triggers, learn to release them, embody, Throughout your day, be an embodiment of the intention of the version of yourself you want to be. You do that. And then whenever in the morning, I like the morning, but you can do it whenever you want. Do your meta creation and get to that reduced brainwave state and then really feed it in there. And you know what? You are now sending a fax to the universe, the universal mind. You're sending a fax that says, this is what I want. This is what I am. This is what I deserve. And I guarantee you, it takes a few minutes for this to catch up, but it catches up. Because right now, this is yesterday's thoughts and emotions and feelings. That's what we're seeing right now. But you do this, and over time, I guarantee you, you're gonna have different experiences, right? You're gonna have different experiences. Okay, so let me see if I can see anyone, have any questions in the chat? Okay. I'm not seeing any questions, anyone? No questions at all. Last chance. No question is a dumb question. All right, so what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is I want you to experiment. I know I have several people, I have a few people who are not in my program. Um, so this might be new to you, but if you're in it, then, then you know you know what I'm up to now. Um, and then for all those other 30 people who are wish, watching the replay, which most of them are not in my programs, I'm just gonna ask you at this point to put your earbuds or headphones on. Um, and since there are no questions, what I will do is I am going to play this, um, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna log off. I'm gonna turn my camera off. Um, I don't mean log off, but I'm gonna turn my camera off and I'll be doing energy work on you throughout this next 10, 12 minutes. And then you are more than welcome when the words stop, when I stop speaking, you are more than welcome to stay on the line and listen to the tunes because they are binaural and, and uh, tuning forks. Plus I will still be doing energy work on you. Um, and then that will be it. When you're done, you're done and, and you can say bye-bye. And then you can tell me on Facebook that you enjoyed this. Okay, so if everyone's ready, I'm gonna turn my face off. I'm gonna do a share screen. I'm gonna share sound. Someone just tell me in the chat that you can hear this really quickly. Okay. 
and we got kicked out. Okay, in the chat, let me know, just give me a yes or a why if you can hear this. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Close your eyes and begin to relax. Allow yourself these next few moments to go deeper and deeper into your consciousness. Allow the sounds of the music, the healing frequencies, the binaural beats, synchronize your brain and relax your body. Breathing softly and slowly up through your feet and out through the top of your head. In the top of your head, out the bottom of your feet. Become one with your breath. Relaxing more and more. Allowing the energetic frequencies inside the music and tones to penetrate the energy that surrounds you and runs within you. Allow the radionics waves being directed at you right now. Increase your vibrational frequency. Notice the subtle feeling of warmth as the energy flows to you and through you. Keeping your spine straight, planting your feet firmly in the ground, just allowing your whole body to breathe. Now that you're relaxed in body and mind, I want you to think of the intention that you've chosen to work on today. It doesn't matter how big or unlikely. Quantum physics tells us there is no such thing as impossible. What matters is that this intention is something that's important to you. This is something you want on a soul level. Something that lights you up and inspires you. Something that makes you feel beautiful and creative. Something that makes your heart and spirit soar. Think of it now. Imagine that your intention has come true and you are standing looking down at a timeline of your recent past. Look all the way back to yesterday. Think about what you did yesterday and then move forward to today. Think about what you've done today. And in the days that follow, your intention came true. Your intention has already come to pass. 
Imagine. Imagine. Now you get to celebrate the intention has come true. You've manifested it, brought it to life in the material world. Let's imagine that you're looking back at the recent memory of how your intention came to pass. And it doesn't matter what actions or activities or circumstances took place. We're only looking at the fact that it has occurred. Your intention has come to pass. And now it's time to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Who were you with when you found out? What were you doing when you found out? Who were you so excited to share the news with? I want you to hear in your mind's eye, what did they say to you? How did they congratulate you? And how did you respond? How are you choosing to celebrate this amazing and emotionally fulfilling intention coming true? Can you hear someone congratulating you? Hear that now. Hear the applause and the joy in the air as you celebrate this fabulous win. You manifested this in the fourth dimension and now it's appearing here in the third dimension, your physical world. You understand that all creation begins in the quantum field, whether consciously or unconsciously, everything begins in the quantum field. This loving, intelligent, formless matter awaits your instructions before materializing into physical matter. Now that you understand that your thoughts, images, emotions, and actions are actual instructions and that time and space are but three-dimensional constructs not intended to be taken as law in the fourth dimension, now that you understand your ability to consciously create the life of your dreams, you are filled with such joy and gratitude. I'd like you to reach inside and feel that now. Can you cultivate and conjure up all of your thoughts and emotions to bask in the beauty of appreciation? Feel the gratitude. Bask in the joy. Allow the gratitude to flow through every atom in your body. Feel the appreciation from head to toe as you relax in absolute ecstasy of creating your ideal outcome. Allow that feeling of appreciation to penetrate all of your cells from head to foot, from chakra to chakra. Feel it flowing inside and around you filling your aura and your energy body with pure gratitude, knowing that everything changes now. You have created your intentions in the quantum field. You have manifested reality from your emotions, your images, your beliefs, and your thoughts. You have done it. Celebrate this joy now. Celebrate this meaning now and allow it to be real 
And as you move forward, allow it to be real in your waking hours. Embody the feeling of already having achieved your intention. Carry it with you in your cells every moment of every day until it appears in your physical world. And when you are ready, you may begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, becoming back into your body and slowly opening your eyes and coming back into the room.